Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. My name is Mrs. Nixon. I am so excited to be here with you today to help support you to become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. Do you ever just have a favorite book? And maybe you have a favorite time of year that you love to read your favorite book. This happens to be one of my favorite books. This one's called You Are Special. And I love reading it around this time of year because it just reminds me that Everybody is special in their own unique and special way. If you're looking for just a really good hearted feeling story, this is one that I highly recommend. You can check it out by going to your county library or look for it on Sora. Speaking of Sora, I know that here in Fresno Unified, we love to have a little bit of friendly competition and we love to see who our top checkout schools are for Fresno Unified. Let's see who is in second place this week with our number of checkouts. Look at this, it's Robinson Elementary. Way to go Roadrunners, nicely done. Now, if you're interested in having your school make it onto our top checkout list, then make sure that you're checking out your books through Sora and then tell a friend or maybe two or three and you can be able to get onto our list. Now, I have one other small little really fun thing to talk about with you this morning, and that is our activity books here at PBS. They're really easy to get and they're super fun to do. All you need to do is send a letter to me. Use the address that's right here below on the screen and you can uh, just send it to me and I'll make sure that one of these activity books gets in the mail. Now, don't forget to include your return address because you can always do it using an email. In that email, just let me know what's something that you're doing um, maybe in your classroom or something you've learned here on PBS or tell me about what your favorite story is that you like to read this time of year. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, boys and girls, are we ready to get started? I have three things that we're gonna go through today. We're gonna look at syllables, prefixes, and root words. So let's get started. This week, we've been warming up our brains, looking at these high frequency words, and I know that you've been practicing them so hard at home. So let's go through and let's read them together. And I wanna hear you all the way down here at the PBS studio. So say them nice and big and loud. Here we go. Of, off, once, one, open, only, other, or, out, our. Nicely done. Okay, I've got two words today. We have other, which is O-T-H-E-R, and then a simple word, or, O-R. Nice and easy, right? Okay, help me put these in a sentence. So I prefer the mmm ice cream flavor. How about this one? Do you like to ride a bike? Mmm, skateboard. Oh, you're telling me these are so easy today, right? Because you know you're comparing a bike and a skateboard, so you would use the word or. Do you like to ride a bike or skateboard? I prefer the other ice cream flavor. Notice I didn't tell you which kind of ice cream flavor is my most favorite, right? It's just gonna be the other one. Kind of being funny, right? Okay, let's look at those syllables. We've been talking about syllables this week and this specifically we're looking at a, a spelling pattern and we're looking at that vowel consonant E. That E at the end is making a word say that long vowel sound. So let's look at it right here. So if I have this word right here, alone, but I'm gonna split it up into syllables right now. So remember how we do that? We go through and we find all our vowels. Now, I know that that E is actually going to belong to this vowel here. So this is all gonna be in one syllable. Every syllable has one vowel sound. So in order to split this, I'm actually going to split the A by itself and then loan 
is its own syllable. So alone is our word. Okay, let's try it one more time. Let's look over here. So here's our word. I'm gonna put all of my vowels in red so that I can see them. Looking right here for my vowel consonant E spelling pattern, which makes my A say its name, makes it a long vowel. So remember, we've got our two vowels. We split between the consonants. So I'm gonna split it right there. So we have escape, escape, and there's our word. Nicely done. We're just training our brains on how to chunk out those longer words so that when we come to words that we're not familiar with, we can break them down into smaller parts. Okay, speaking of smaller parts, another thing that's helpful when reading these longer words is to understand what a prefix, a suffix, and a base word are. So I'm gonna start with base words. Now remember, a base word is simply that. It's just a word that can stand on its own, um, it, and it's got its own meaning. For example, place, cook, and obey. These are all words that we're familiar with. Now, if I wanna add a prefix, a prefix is a group of letters that are added to the beginning of the word to change meaning. Now, these are not words, they're just groups of letters. Miss means bad or wrong. So if I take miss and I put it with place, I'm gonna place my shoes by the door. If I misplace my shoes, well, that means something went terribly wrong, right? Because they are in the wrong place. They got not next to the front door, they're lost. All right, pre means before. So if I add, if I know I'm gonna cook something, I might have to pre-cook. That means cook something before I start all of my main, my main meal. And then I have obey, means I'm gonna be following the rules, right? Now, dis means not. So if I have the word disobey, that means I did not follow the rules. I did not obey what was asked of me, right? Okay, so what might this look like if we were to do it in a worksheet, right? Because that's what we're often asked to do. So let's go through and let's look. Um, I'm gonna skip down, I'm gonna do uh, numbers two, three, and four, because I feel like we've talked about preheat multiple times. Um, but I wanna go down here, I'm gonna look at number two. And what we're gonna do here is we're looking and reading our sentence, and then we're looking for the word that has that uh, prefix in it, and then we're gonna decide what does that prefix um, do to our word. So, for example, do you distrust the candidate for mayor. So we know that distrust is our word that has the prefix. So what does distrust mean? Well, what does dis mean? Do you remember? Dis means that it means not. So we do not trust. So I'm gonna put this right here just so we can see it. Excellent. And then how about this next one? I can't believe I misspelled your email address. Ooh, that happens often, right? Okay, what's our word that has the prefix? Help me find it. Where is it? There it is. I misspelled your email address. What was the prefix? Miss, right? And what does miss mean? Do you remember? You got it. So it means uh, wrong, right? So it means we spelled it wrong. Nicely done. Last one, the judges get to preview the art this evening. So what's our word that has the prefix? Preview, good job. Remember what pre means? You got it, it means before. So what does it mean that we're gonna do if we're gonna preview something? It means that we're going to view it before. Nicely done. Now, looking down here at the bottom, the bottom says we're gonna be looking for those syllable patterns with that vowel consonant E uh, at the end. Okay, so let's look right here. Do we see a, I see an E at the end. Do I, do I get to keep it or do I cross it out? Does it have a vowel consonant E? 
Ooh, it doesn't have a vowel. This is simple, and that doesn't follow our rules. So I'm gonna cross that one off. It was trying to trick us, it had an E, so I thought, ooh, it's gonna be all the words with an E, and it was not. So let's look very carefully. How about over here? Refuse, do we have the vowel consonant E? Yes, right there, so refuse gets to stay on there. Okay, how about this one? Compute, does it have a vowel consonant E at the end? Yes, it does, right there. Compute, excellent. And how about report? No, it does not, doesn't have that vowel consonant E at the end. And how about surprise? Do you see it? It's got the I-S-E at the end, so it's following our pattern. Okay, are you starting to see how this goes? Excellent, how about this one right here? Table, oh, whoops, it's got a B-L-E, so nope, that one is not going to follow our pattern that we're looking for this week. How about pancake? Do you see it? Vowel consonant E, yep, that one does, pancake. How about awful? Yeah, we know it's not awful because that one doesn't even have an E at the end. And just like this one, market doesn't have an E at the end either. How about create? Has an a, 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 a vowel consonant and an E, so yes, right there. Excellent job. Okay, let's finish out today. We've been talking about uh, root words. Now root words are kind of similar to a base word that it's really, it's just the simplest form of a word. It's the smallest piece of the word. And there's really no prefixes or suffixes that have been added to this word. So sometimes when you come across a word that has prefixes and suffixes on it, it's easier if you pull those pieces off and just look at that. So let's do it. There are new ideas all around us. Nature is an inspiration. So what would be our root word for inspiration? Would it be ration, shun? How about this one? Inspire, yes. Inspire is actually just the shortened version or the, sh the root word for inspiration. And inspire just means you're gonna fill someone with an urge to do or feel something. So you're gonna inspire them. The inspiration is what that person sees to do it. So shun actually changes it to, uh, from a verb to a noun. A verb being an action, inspiration becomes the noun. What is it that gave them that urge? All right, hopefully I gave you a little bit of inspiration that you're gonna go and check out a book and maybe look for some root words in it today and figure out what does, the, what does this new word mean? So thanks for hanging out with me today as you're getting ready for school. Remember, you are responsible for your learning success. So listen, ask questions, and share your ideas because together we can do so much more. I hope you have a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you back here tomorrow on PBS. Have a good one and take care. Bye-bye. brand new day time to learn and games to play learning things is so much fun learning is good for everyone